but you're welcome and yeah keep keep asking anything we have daniel um today also on board so i will maybe do a start um just to introduce everyone quickly and um, we will then also um, go ahead a little bit and dive a little bit deeper into um, everyone's profile. But um, I want to welcome Daniel um, on board of the team to Evitat. He is um, a really new joint member of the team. And I'm really excited. Daniel comes also with um, a huge knowledge and experience um, previously working with Australian Energy Foundation and he will also be looking after our community um, application and the community members so yeah feel free to ask questions um, and like I said already um, previously we will take care of the questions as good as possible tonight but also, um, like we will basically copy them out. Um, what we can't answer directly, we will try to answer um, in the days after the event and post that um, with the recording also in Evitat community so that you can definitely revisit it um, and also share it with anyone who might be interested in. So welcome everyone tonight to this session a green case study. Um, and we have tonight um, Simona Schenko um, on board, um, who is going to talk about her renovation project. Um, and it's a really interesting transformation from a drafty and cold 0.8 star energy rated house to an 8.6 star comfortable and healthy family home. And it's a really interesting um, journey to, to explore and to probably draw also some um, ideas what everyone can um, adapt to, to their renovation journey and really to be inspired, um, but also to have maybe um, an opportunity to ask questions and um, yeah, to, to be really supported along that journey. So, um, before we start and go ahead, I really want to make an acknowledgement of country. So in the spirit of reconciliation, Evitat acknowledges the traditional custodians of country and land throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. And we pay our respect to their elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aborigine and Torres Strait Island peoples today. We are in particular here today also to listen, learn, and build a future together. So, um, like I already introduced Simona, but I will also let Simona um, tell a little bit more about herself. And then I will say a few things about myself so that you also know why I'm actually here co-host and um, what is actually our relationship um, at the moment with Evitat. So yep. Simona, I'm handing it over to you. Yep. Thanks so much for the, for the introduction. And yeah, I'm really happy to be here to talk about our unit again and the journey we went through. A little bit about myself. Yeah, my name is Simone. Um, I'm a certified passive house designer and the uh, owner at Queen Eco Design and also recently formed Queen Architecture. Um, yeah, I, I really think everyone should have the right to live in a healthy, comfortable home or house uh, or any building at all or work in any building at all. It doesn't cost the earth. Uh, and our mission is really to make energy efficient and sustainable spaces a staple in the Australian landscape. Um, and I think yeah, there is a lot of things that need to be done. And uh, obviously, as a designer, it's always fun to build new homes. Uh, you know, you, you can kind of be sometimes a bit be more creative or can do more things. But the reality is that, you know, most people can never afford that. And, um, you know, most people live in really cold and drafty homes, similar to the one we bought. Um, so I think it's really important that we help everyone out there, you know, to get an idea of what other things you can actually do, you know, that, that it's not that hard or not as impossible as some people think. And yeah, that's that's why we're here today, to tell you a little bit about our story, um, the things we did, the things that worked, the things maybe that didn't work or the things I would do differently. And then, yeah, hopefully someone can take away a little bit from it. And then, you know, that, is, that would be the main thing. Great. Um, so 
I have been working with Simona very closely over the past probably um, nearly one and a half years. Um, so I'm a co-founder of Evitat and um, we are a tech company and we really want to provide a new solution for conscious home renovation so that we make it easier for people to make the right choices, but also to be felt um, supported along the way. And um, our core product is actually the e-logbook, which is um, a report around um, all your home improvements to track and measure the impact you generate and then in future to convert this also in sustainable home value. So we are creating here a very collaborative ecosystem of responsible businesses who are joining us along the way. We want to uh, encourage transparency and trust around products and material choices, and also invite, of course, the entire um, stakeholders, means also professionals, trade, and so on, with that um, shared mindset. And Simona is a vital um, or key collaborative, um, actually a stakeholder in, in all of this. She has contributed um, with her knowledge and experience to the solution we will discuss later. And I'm really happy actually that um, we have here, for example, today also the opportunity to showcase a little bit um, what value and what benefits the logbook provides in particular for home renovations. So I hand it over and, and you can make a start. Yep. So this is our place, the, the shabby little two bedroom unit we bought in, in 2010. And um, as most of you know, typically the real estate pictures look much, much better than what you can see in reality. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to talk about that shortly. But yeah, it's a small little unit. It was a two, the, the, the typical unit you find everywhere. A two bedroom, quick veneer, uh, terrible single glazed aluminum windows, no insulation whatsoever. Um, yeah, really bad old, uh, you know, halogen lighting throughout. Uh, the water out, out of the taps was green and yellow. Um, there was a really dodgy gas heater in there that I would have never touched. Um, and there was a beautiful green carpet everywhere in the house, even in the toilet and the bathroom. No idea in the world why anyone would do that. Um, but yeah, that's what we bought in 2010. And um, maybe the next one. And yeah, here just a few images how it looked inside. You can see the, the beautiful green carpet. Um, it was all a little bit dark inside with the dark green carpet and, uh, yeah, and the brown trims. And maybe next image. And yeah, that was the, the lovely backyard, you know, really yeah, not much in it. Um, and there you can see there is a little staircase that went out from the laundry. Um, and that's something that's quite typical to a lot of homes in Australia that I see, that um, there is often no access to the garden at all, you know, to the rear garden. So this is actually our north garden. And yeah, there are many homes similar to this, where the only access to the garden is through the laundry. And uh, early on, when we got the place, we thought, ah, oh, you know, it would be so amazing to turn the house on its head and bring the, the living room to the back and open it all up. But then we quickly realized, okay, that will be really expensive because once you start doing that and you flip the house on its head and you have to change all the plumbing and everything, we said, okay, it's just a unit we can't overcapitalize. So let's make compromises. So um, therefore, yeah, we, we came up with a different solution, which I'm going to share with you shortly. So maybe next one. And yeah, that was the, the beautiful kitchen. Um, the oven was still original from the 70s. I think one burner was still working, I think. Most of the doors didn't even open. But yeah, it was quite interesting. Um, but yeah, here's just a, a summary again. You know, there was no insulation, single glazed windows, uh, halogen lighting throughout, and yeah, beautiful old downlights, um, really bad appliances. And it was just, in short, freezing. It was really horrible. Um, so straight away, we yeah, but when we bought the unit, we had big dreams and we thought, oh, we're going to turn this around, we're going to flip this and we're going to sell it. And then we have enough money to buy something bigger for us, something nicer. But then the whole financial crisis and everything collapsed and um, 
I think just one or two months later, they sold our direct neighbor, like a proper sized house on a proper, si proper sized block, I think only for $10,000 more than what we had bought our tiny unit for. So we knew, okay, there is no point in doing a quick flip. <laughs> We're gonna sit in here for quite a long time. So, okay, let's do it right. And then, um, yeah, next one. And here's a little bit at a glance, you know, what we did or when we did things and we did it a bit in stages. So as I said, we bought the place in 2010 and literally on the day we got the keys, we spent the whole day whipping, whipping out this, those horrendous carpets. We just couldn't stand them. So we spent the whole day on our knees whipping them out. So the, the first part of the renovation was yeah, whipping out the carpets. Um, and actually, I think we, we straight away moved in. I think uh, I think we slept already in it the same day or the next day, just with whatever suitcases and whatnot. But yeah, but we whipped out the carpet. Um, we restumped. Um, we added some uh, internal walls to create new rooms and we started adding wall and roof insulation that were kind of the first things that were um, really quickly but um, and I'm going to go into a bit more detail uh, later you know what we did with the insulation then later in the same year um, we started looking at the heating system um, but one thing what we wanted to do is we wanted to know a little bit more how the house performs before we installed the insulation system. Um, because we weren't quite sure, or maybe I should say I was quite keen on getting hydronic heating in, but then we thought, okay, it's just a unit and, you know, would other people appreciate it? And then back then in the day, 2010, I think people convinced me to go, go with a gas heater, which nowadays I wouldn't do anymore. But back then, you know, it was kind of the thing to do. So yeah, we, we insulated then under the floor, um, we insulated, uh, we installed the windows. And then once we knew how the house performed, we installed the heating system um, as well. I actually, sorry, I'm, I mixed it up. I'm just see, seeing actually the windows came before the heating. Uh, but yeah, we installed new lighting, new kitchen, uh, a new main bathroom. We put, you know, non-toxic paint, new appliances throughout and solar panels. And then um, actually the next stage of the renovations came then a few years later. Um, by that time, we had then two little kids. Um, and then we turned our uh, the, yeah, the, the one room into an ensuite, which previously we had done the, the rough plumbing, but then at that time we actually turned it into an ensuite and we started working a bit more on the outdoor gardens. But again, I'm gonna talk about more in detail. And then in yeah, 2022, we sold the place uh, when we had finished our own new shiny passive house, which is quite exciting. Just but one quick question, um, Simona, um, which came through. In terms of the energy rating in the mm -hmm. beginning, how was that determined um, or calculated? Mm -hmm. Was it based on Nefes rating? Yes. So what was? Yeah, it, it was a Nefes rating. And we had uh, put it all in with the existing conditions. And that was, yeah, 0.8. And then we had tried a few things. What is if we put in wall insulation and roof insulation? And then we, we tried what happens if we keep the windows and... If we don't keep the windows, um, we had even tried a scenario, what happens if we create an airlock, you know, how much would it add to it? But um, one thing with our works, uh, like I said, is, you know, we, we had to think about to keep it as cost effective as possible. And from that reason, we decided, okay, we don't want to, we, we decided we don't want to do any structural works. We don't want to do anything that triggers a building permit because then suddenly you have to, yeah, it's, it's a whole range of things that, that's ahead of you. Not just, you need to do plans, but you need structural engineering, you need a building permit. So we thought, okay, let's just do everything internal, which means we didn't take out any walls. Um, we we op you know, did wall openings where we didn't need any structural because there were already structural support. And we actually added walls where we created new rooms. Um, that was one of the things. And therefore, also, we didn't create an external airlock because that would have been structural work. Um, but yeah. Just a quick question. Um, you have also, I think, along the way, um, it turned from a two bedroom into a three bedroom home. Yes, yes. Um, maybe maybe yes. if we go, go to the next, uh, or maybe not yeah. sure if, if we go to another image or. Maybe I'll talk a little bit about that later, but maybe I just talk about the, the journey as well, how we did it. Yeah. But this, I think, is quite a good image. I think this is an image of the old, what is it yet? Yeah, the old bathroom. So what it is, and I just realized we probably should have put in an old floor plan and a new floor plan, how it's looking yeah, now. Exactly. Maybe, That's what, what I was. Um, yeah, maybe we, we can, we can add that later to, to the chat or something. So um, 
what it was, there was a separate kitchen and then there was a big living um, dining area in one. Um, and what we had done there is we, we added an extra wall and created um, a bathroom. So we, we kind of took a little bit away from the kitchen and opened up the wall, which then created enough space for a kitchen open living dining area. And then on the back of the house, there was a really awkward shaped um, uh, walk in rope, uh, a big bathroom, a separate toilet and a laundry. And we kind of converted that entire space or rather I should say we, we converted the former bathroom, toilet, laundry into our new master bedroom. So that was on the northern side on the back of the house where the previous laundry was. So we, we just um, yeah we removed non-structural walls and, and opened up things. And then, yeah, created the third bedroom in there. And what used to be the, the walk-in walk for the master, we turned into an ensuite. Um, and yeah, this picture, when you look out there, that would have been the, the previous bathroom. And when you can see in here, in between the stud walls, that is where the, the current um, ensuite is. And yeah, we, we didn't change any window openings or something either, because, you know, if you, by the time you, you make windows wider, again, you need structural support, you need a structural engineer to determine the lintel. So we, we kept everything as it is. Um, we have one spot in the house where we kept the opening, but made it longer. So rather than having a, just a, a window, we turned it into a door. So I can show that on another image. Um, but in here, you can see, you know, all the works we did. And the thing is, especially in the first part of the major renovation, before we had kids, we did everything ourselves. So, yeah, we, we ripped off the, the, the carpet. Uh, we ripped off all the plasterboard from the external walls, as you can see here. Um, yeah, from, from the floors, the, the, the ceilings partially came down as well. Um, and, yeah, uh, yeah, we removed the gas heater. Or we got it removed, I should rather say. Um and then, um, yeah, we even went as far in, or I should say my partner, he, he watched YouTube and see, you know, how do you polish timber floors? Okay, let's do this. Not a good idea if you haven't done it before. Um, I should say, um, we, we, we uh, or he watched lots of videos as well about tiling. So he actually did, did the tiling in the bathrooms and the splashbacks and whatnot. So it was quite time intense. But having said that, we got specialists in for the waterproofing and everything. So, you know, don't, don't mess with that. Um, and the wiring in the house was really dodgy as well. So we had to all switch boards. So we, we got someone in and when the plasterboard was off, that was a good, you know, um, yeah, the right time to get all the wiring new in, get a new switchboard in. Um, and as I had mentioned before, that the water was just really disgusting. There were really old um, metal pipes everywhere and the water in the bathtub just turned yellow and green. So we got a lot of the piping uh, re replaced as well. Um, and maybe a next image. And yeah, here just a few other screenshots. So what, what you can see here on the right, that was actually the laundry. So the, the front thing was the laundry door and the one next to it was the laundry window. And then on the left-hand side, the, the little bit you can see is the bit of the bathroom window. And yeah, that's the, was the wall that was non-structural we, we took off. And that's the uh, insulation. Um, yeah, that's the insulation, yeah. And um, maybe speaking of insulation, that was a big learning curve for me as well. And um, back then in the day, uh, 2010, I was a bit naive still. And I thought, OK, if you engage an insulation company, they know what they're doing. But sadly, we had to learn it the hard way that they don't. Um, so we, we got them to install the wall insulation and the roof insulation where we were at work. And when we got home, we couldn't believe our eyes. So um, everywhere where there were gaps around the windows. And you know, if you can imagine, and, um, we have some windows that are close to the floor, you know, they, they stopped that much, you know, they have a still height of that much. And then they hadn't put in any insulation underneath, or there were lots of areas where there's just gaps all around the house. Luckily, they left, they left a few extra beds there. And my partner and I, we spent almost an entire day just fixing up all their gaps. But the problem is that most people wouldn't know that. And if, you know, the insulation gets installed and then straight away someone comes and inst installs all the plasterboard, you wouldn't even know where all the mess is or, you know, where all the mess ups are. So that, that was a big learning curve. So from that point on, I realized, okay, you can't just go to any insulation company, as that as it is. Uh, you have to make sure that, A, you know, they have a proven record that they're good, or you get almost like a third party to check on their work, or you go in yourself. So that's something awesome. Big, big takeaway. I... I'm um, just reading through the, the questions and there is, of course, you know, a question 
has all these changes been achieved in the original floor plan? And I have found the original floor plan. Ah, awesome. I downloaded <laughs> it. Um, yeah. And also the, the slightly adapted one, just yep. to show, okay, so I will do that yep. here. Yes, so we, we didn't do an extension at all. It's all in the existing floor plan. Yeah, exactly. So let me just switch that. So yep. I hope everyone can see this is yep. the original floor plan with the two bedrooms. Yep. Um, maybe Simona, you... Yep. Yeah, as you, as you can see, there is kind of a, a big lounge room and then there is a kitchen and meals area. And then yeah, also you can see we had a lovely ramp in front of the house because the previous owner was elderly. And then bed one used to be um, the master bedroom with a walk-in walk behind and then a walkthrough through the bathroom. And yeah, like I said, the bathroom was quite disgusting with the green carpet. I don't even want to know much about it. But then, yeah, what we did is we opened up the wall opposite the porch, opposite the entry wall. So, um, no, sorry, sorry, that, that wall stayed. Now we, oh, no, no, we opened that one up. Uh, also, we took out the wall between the meals and the lounge. And we created a new bathroom where the current kitchen is. So we, we added in a new wall. So the bathroom was 1.8 meter deep. Um, and as you can see on, on the later floor plan, then shortly uh, we created a bathroom. And then where the current meals is was the kitchen. And um, as you can see at the back where the bathroom is, the toilet and the laundry, that whole room we kind of squared off and that uh, turned that into uh, the master. And we also removed the stairs at the back and rather than having a door there, we just had a, a big window there. And yeah, pretty much the only room we didn't change is bedroom two. Bedroom two stayed exactly as it was. And as you can see behind bedroom one, there is a linen cabinet um, behind the walk-in wall. And typically linen cabinets, they're kind of four or 500 deep, which is not quite enough for a washing machine. So what we did is we adjusted that back wall slightly so that we could fit in a washing machine. So we turned that little linen cabinet into our European laundry. And in um, yeah, our ensuite went where the, the, the previous walk-in wall was. And bedroom one, we actually took a little bit away from the room and created um, a built-in rope and a built-in shelf. So I will try to put yeah. them next to each other if that works, but might not be ideal. Let me just maybe switch yep. to the new one. Yep. Yeah, so as you can see here, the, the bedroom in the right back corner hasn't changed. Then on the, the, the new master bedroom at the back now facing north yeah we had beautiful light there um it's the new bedroom with access to the ensuite then we have um the bedroom at the front which got a little bit smaller because we added the the rope um and as you can see adjacent to the rope is that little shelf and we created that as well to give it a little bit more depth in the ensuite because the, the ensuite itself i think is only 1.4 but then where the shower is, it's a little bit more to help us with the splash of the water. That was the idea behind that. And yeah, then we just have the normal bathroom with a shower over bath um, and our beautiful IKEA kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, one more question. Do you have a recommendation around type of wall insulation, glass wool versus polyester and maybe other options? Yep. Um, so I must say on most projects we've used earth wool lately. Glass wool is just really itchy and, and hard to install yourself. Um, having said that, polyester is typically a bit better because it doesn't sag and it, it's not as, um, yeah, you, it can even get wet or something without any mold or any issues, but polyester is typically a bit more expensive. So therefore I would say for most of our projects we use just earth wool. So back in the day we used glass wool as well, which is a pain to install. Um, so I would definitely recommend go for uh, for. Yeah. Um, just to let you also know, um, there's a really a nice range of insulation types. Um, like we are also talking with um, some suppliers who have even natural choices completely. Um, they are not even treated with any chemicals or so on. So it really depends also on um, your personal health situation, for example, if you are very sensitive to, to these things, um, you have definitely also options and choices to look into, which are completely untreated, but which have 
thermal, like great thermal um, benefits as well. Um, we will be also um, launching soon um, in a better version um, the marketplace, and there, there will be a range of choices um, along the way. And that's probably something really to explore. I think insulation is such an essential part to, to renovation, and we should all put some focus on it. Um, but it's also good to understand actually the ranges and the different types and what um, goes in wall situations, what goes maybe in roofs, um, under flooring and so on. Good. Let's go back to the slides. Yep. Yeah, and, and here's just a good summary of the things we used in the house. So the, for the external walls, we had used R2.5, uh, the same for underfloor. Uh, in the ceiling, we had R7, which was two layers of 3.5 on top of each other. Uh, we had installed LED lighting throughout, which back in the day was quite expensive. So it was way over $100 for a light fitting. And then um, because you had needed the light fittings that don't get hot. So back then it was all quite complicated. Um, luckily, nowadays, it's much easier and you have much more choice. Um, we also installed non-toxic and low VOC finishes and paints throughout. So we had uh, levers oil. For the, for the floors. And I must say that's really easy and user-friendly um, because what it is, if you typically vanish your floors, it's kind of, you have poly oxy and it's, it's all sealed and shiny, but the problem is A, it's toxic, it stings, and I can't even handle it, I get massive migraines. But the other thing is if your floors are damaged, you kind of have to send back your entire house and redo it. Versus with the oils, you can rejuvenate them yourself. So say if, if you would have a stain somewhere or something, you can just buff or, or redo, send that small area, you oil it and everything is fine again. So it's, it's quite user-friendly um, from that point. And for paints, we went for uh, Hames paint, which are low VOC and we found them quite uh, cost efficient. Um, and I guess paint is something that can easily be done yourself. You know, that, that's something you know, if you have the time and the patience, you know, it's something where you can save a lot of money. Um, we went for a one and a half kilowatt PV system, which already a few months after we were credit, we should have gone a bit bigger. But the thing was, we were quite lucky. We actually got the 68 cent in fee tariff, which is unheard of today. Um, but uh, when the, the in fee tariff was locked in, we could not increase the system or we would have lost our in fee tariff. So therefore we just stayed with the one and a half. We have a um, I, I think a few years later, after we got it, the inverter uh, broke down during warranty and we got a new one. So actually the system could be upgraded, but yeah, we, we never did it then. But, but having said that, the, the system was at a point that the house was running fully efficient during summer because there's so little energy we needed um, and that we would make quite a bit profit during the summer months, but it was not quite enough to offset all the winter months. So in winter, we would need to pay a little bit on top of it. So we're saying, okay, if we would have had half a kilowatt more, <laughs> it would have been enough. Um, but yeah, lessons learned. Um, but, but speaking of lesson learned, uh, one thing what I wanted to, to give everyone as a takeaway is, you know, to, to not be disheartened or, you know, not be discouraged that it's all too hard. Um, so even when we started this renovation or when I said, you know, what I wanted to do, everyone thought, are oh, you crazy? You're overcapitalizing. Why are you doing this? It's not worth it. It's too expensive. Um, and especially with the double glazed windows, even my partner needed quite a bit of convincing. Um, but in the end, once it was done, everyone who came into our house just commented on, oh my God, it, it, it's so quiet, it's so calm, it's so warm. And um, yeah, so it, it's it's really, really more than worth it on, on top of all the energy savings and you know um, on, on your bills that you have, it's just the, the level of comfort and quality in your house. Um, yeah, it's just completely, completely different. Can, can I just ask, um, because you mentioned um, that your partner needed convincing around double glazing. Um, so like, what was that conversation like? Um, was it, you know, are we in Australia? <laughs> we don't require that much. No, 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 or, not, like, not what, even what that was? much. But he thought, oh, you know, no one will appreciate it. And if we sell that house, you know, we're, we're just wasting that money. Um, but I, I still remember when we had, uh, when the, before we had the new windows, so our dining table was in front of a big window. And I usually would sit there with a scarf on because I was so cold. Mm -hmm. I was so freezing in my back. 
And I just thought, you know, you got to be kidding me because, you know, I've grown up in Germany and Germany is such a cold country in winter. And I've never experienced such a cold as I did in our own place at Naan. You know, we, we have to do it. And then um, uh, we were quite lucky that back then in the day, um, there weren't that many affordable options on the market. So um, all the high performing glazing, like I wanted it would have been absolute fortune. But we were actually lucky and shared a container with some of our clients. Uh, and we get windows over from Germany that had a U value of 1.1 for double glazing. Mm. Um, and yeah, so from that point of view, you know, we, we saved quite a bit of money. Also back in the days, you know, the containers were cheaper. So there's <laughs> a bit of give and take. Um, but yeah, I think we had only paid whatever, 10 or $12,000 for the windows in the container. And luckily we have a good friend who knows how to install windows from Germany. So he installed the windows with us. So there was quite a bit of saving there. Yeah, that, that's probably a unique situation. Yes. But I guess um, at the moment, I think the demand is really increasing around the standards um, with looking at the changes in um, NCC and requirements around um, seven star rating, which mm -hmm. will be rolled out um, soon. I think the, or I'm hoping that that will also bring down to some degree the pricing and make actually at least double glazing um, with great um, performance yeah. levels actually more a standard choice um, away from single glazing aluminium only um, really to something which is um, highly efficient and which really um, contributes actually to minimize these increasing energy costs um, or being exposed to increasing energy costs because this is exactly where we can save um, on the hip pocket um, we can save also um, and decarbonize at the same time which is a great um, way to be part of the entire solution I think yeah. so that's great yeah yeah, and over the last few years, I mean, the, the market has changed enormously. Like, like I said, back then, 2010, 11, there was barely anything. And now there's so many great providers that have good windows that aren't as expensive anymore. And, you know, more and more are coming out all the time. Um, and I don't want to name and shame, but there is one really big aluminum window manufacturer that does double glazing. And I know many builders go to them as a default. And everyone thinks, ah, their windows are the best. However, what we often find is if you go to a UPVC manufacturer, with, with European frames that the windows perform much, much better and often cost less, less than those double glazed aluminum windows that perform much worse. So for instance, those uh, typical aluminum windows, they would have a U value of around three, uh, whereas I typically would recommend to go with something for U2 or even lower. So with the U value, it's kind of reverse to the R value, the lower, the better. So um, just as a comparison, most, um, whatever, um, double glazed aluminum windows, the, the bad ones might even sit around four. Um, and yeah, double glazed timber, even the the, the not so good ones sit maybe around three, that the standard ones you get. But yeah, I would recommend you go at least to two. And if you even can go for the 1.1 or 1.4, if you really want to reach for high performance, um, which is, yeah. And, and like I said, there are many, many manufacturers on the market now. Uh, and some of them import the windows from overseas and others, they import the frames and they manufacture the windows here. So lots of choices. Yeah. Um, I just want to, to point out, there was a question also around um, the specifics, for example, from for the low VOC paint brand. Yeah. I think that's what um, Simona Thanks. can share even in... In, in the recording actually um, and post these details um, later on. And, um, and then we have another question around the windows. What is your opinion regarding single glaze with timber frame? Not good. I think they still have a U value of around five, um, but which is bad. But funnily enough, if you go for standard double glazed aluminum windows that is as bad as single glazed timber windows. So um, therefore I wouldn't waste money on double glazed aluminum unless they are firmly broken. Um, but yeah, I, I, ideally I would stay fully away from single glazed windows because the, the, the tricky thing is, and it's something that frustrates me a bit with the energy weighting system. So you, you can still get six star weighting with a single glazed window, or in some instances you might even get seven stars with a single glazed window. But the problem is a single glazed window will always be drafty. 
So no matter what your star weighting says, because the single glazing is just letting too much cold through. So you will always feel a draft in your home, which means you, you will never really feel comfortable. And I think that's a phenomenon that many people experience in Australian homes where you have your heat up blowing constantly, but no matter how much it blows, you're still not quite feeling right. So you're still feeling a little bit cold. And the reason for that is the drafts, the drafts and the cold surfaces in your room. Because I think it's something like, oh, what is it? I think if, if, if the surfaces in your room are kind of, I'm not sure if it's four degrees, something on it. If the surfaces in your room are four degrees colder than the air, you feel a draft. So you always, you know, feel cold and uncomfortable, which means that you're not, again, no matter what your star rating says or no matter how much insulation you have in your walls, in your floor or in your roof, if your windows are single glazing, you will feel a draft and you will not feel fully comfortable in your home. Exactly. So, and a bit, bit on attention there, but yeah, I'm quite against single glazing. <laughs> um, I'm just going through the questions. They are quite a bit. Um, oh, maybe go through another slide so that we can just yeah, see. Yeah, exactly. While you look at the, going. the images. So. Yeah, here a little bit, again, you know, just a summary of, of the things we did. Um, yeah, maybe just about the, the, the heating that we had. So I had explained already before we took out the old gas heater and um, put in gas uh, ducted, which again, I wouldn't do again. Um, but the interesting thing was when we spoke with um, heating companies, we said, okay, I, I need a quote for a ducted heating system. Our house is such and such efficient. We don't need much. No, 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 you have three bedrooms. You need such and such a big system. I said, no, nah, look at our energy rating. We don't need much. And then most people just didn't listen. And then finally, I found a company that listened and said, okay, you're right. So we, we put in the smallest system that was on the market and it was more than enough. So that, that was definitely good. Um, and again, with, with the gas, um, we had back then, we had a really yeah, fairly old gas hot water system. And we thought, okay, we just keep it until it dies and then we replace it with something nice. And it actually never died. So it's it's still going up until today. And yeah, and as I've mentioned before, we installed a new kitchen, a nice IKEA kitchen. And yeah, we, we added a bit of an, you know, seating and fresco area at the back. Awesome. Yeah, and um, in, in total, you achieved an 8.4 star energy efficiency rating, yep. which is um, an incredible improvement to, to that unit. And I think um, what shows really clearly is um, the decisions you made um, around insulation to improve that part um, really well to add um, even the smaller solar system all of this has actually contributed um, to, to these great improvements um, and all the other choices, mm -hmm. um, which is a fantastic outcome, I think, for in particular for, for a brick veneer unit. And, and in general, you know, in winter, um, even on, on the coldest days, so typically what we would do, we would have the heater on until say seven or 8 p.m. And then once the, once the kids would go to bed, we would turn off the heater. And usually we would still have 18 or 19 degrees in the morning, which, you know, I think is much, yeah, definitely doable. And on the really cold nights, it might have been yeah, 16 or 17. I think, yeah, we had once or twice 16, sometimes 17, but average was 18, 19. And yeah, this is, um, yeah, the, the new place after the renovation. On the left, you can see our nice UPVC tilt and turn windows. And this is the window I mentioned before, where it just was really cold and drafty before, and now it was just nice. And uh, where you can see that the wall, the extension of that wall, that, that would have been the, the previous wall that we had, had opened up. And that's really nice. Actually, you opened it up, um, let even the light yeah. really go through the, the areas, um, which made, makes it also, I think, um, opens it up in general, um, feels much more spacious as well. And... This is in particular a really nice bedroom. Yeah, so, so this is the, the room, what I said before. So the, you see here the glazed window. So that is where the, the laundry door used to be. And then on the left-hand side, on top of the window, you can see a little beam on top or a little leftover from the wall. So that used to be where the existing wall was. Uh, and then the tiny window on top, you know, it's a little bit of odd-shaped window, but we didn't want to spend the money to change it. Um, it's just where the old bathroom window was. Right. 
Yeah, and this used to be the kitchen. <laughs> this is where we had put in um, the extra wall and created just a simple bathroom. And again, you know, pretty much all IKEA, obviously not the toilet, uh, but the IKEA vanity. We have um, IKEA mirror and, and glass shelf, um, little IKEA bench on the side. Um, yeah, my partner did a great job with the tiling. No one actually saw that it was him. <laughs> And um, we also got the off-the-shelf um, shower screen. And that's also quite an, um, a good tip, you know, if, if you ever upgrade your bathrooms, uh, custom-made mirrors or shower screens are really, really expensive. So, you know, you might pay $1,000, $2,000 for a custom-made shower screen or mirror versus uh, a shower screen like this can be between $100 or $200 or maybe a bit more. And you can get uh, really good mirrors, whatever, between $20 or $150 if you just get something you know, off the shelf. Yeah, awesome. And Look for the bit of a bow factor, we just had a custom made timber shelf in that room. That was, yeah. Yeah. Um, one one thing to to add, um, I, I love Simona's approach always to look into affordability of um, home renovations and even new builds. I think it's a really important part also to, to look into, but not sacrificing any, um qualities like it's it's this balance between trying to achieve a really good quality in particular around thermal performance of your homes um and the, the indoor air quality as well so health um, attributions are important as well of course um but yeah in particular these um little um yeah decisions around you know how can i actually um make sure that my my budget goes into the right direction and into things which I want to prioritize um, clearly versus beautifications and, and these things. Um, and I can make a sacrifice here and there on spending the big um, dollars on, on that side, but really making sure I invest um, into quality on, on the other side for formal performance, for health um, decisions and so on. And I think it's also quite important to come up with a master plan at the start. And, you know, depending on what your works are or how, you know, able you are, you might need a designer or architect or someone to help you with it. But to come up with a master plan, you know, what are all the things you can do at your house? You know, what are the things you can improve? Are you doing internal changes? Is there actually an external change? You know, what is it? And you have to establish, you know, what are the things I can do myself? Are there some things where I need a registered trade, you know, like a plumber or electrician? Or are there some things where I might need a planning permit or actually a building permit and, and things like that? And then once you have your master plan, you can look at, okay, what are some things I can do already myself where I don't need a builder or something? But you you, you wouldn't want to do some works to a wall. So, you know, you wouldn't want to insulate or replace a window if a few years down the track you had an extension at that point. So, you know, you don't want to waste money or effort from that point either. So I think you, you need a, a, a good idea, you know, what are all the things you can do? And yeah, this is where the logbook can come in as well. So, you know, you can set your, your health goals, your efficiency goals, your, um, yeah, and, and all those things to, to help you with plan with the bigger picture. But I probably let Sonia talk more about that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's actually a, a great um, point. And um, like we sat down and um, use actually the, the current um, changes with in terms of where we are with the logbook and took all the information um, from how it originally um, worked out and um, all the decisions along the way um, Simona has done and added that in the logbook. And I just wanted to point out what is actually, or what are the benefits of this e-logbook? So similar, for example, to a service book for cars, um, the e-logbook will help basically create um, one repository or a kind of report of all your sustainable home improvements. And why this matters is actually, it's um, easily then to, to showcase um, for future buyers what has been done over time. And we know that conscious home renovations um, sometimes happen in one go, but often enough they have, um, they actually work along the way over a period of time in, in smaller steps. Um, it, um, it might start with solar, for example, or a heat pump, um, and then considerations around um, insulations are often enough happening. The ideal way is probably, of course, to consider first insulation and then um, work through. But 
reality is um, there are always a lot of things uh, like outside um, considerations and so on. So this is exactly um, where we want to help and um, where we want to provide actually a really good solution. And along the way, we uh, support, of course, to future proof your home against rising energy costs and climate effects. And that's exactly how we want to take care of this journey um, to support you along that journey and also to provide the right um, connection points, maybe even in future to finance, for example, or what, um, for example, state or local based um, incentive programs are on offer. There will be more and more coming. And we already have certain um, programs, of course, running for solar, hot, um, uh, hot water, heat pumps, and so on. But there's probably a lot more happening in that space. So to show you a little bit what we have done um, with the data from Simona's home, this is um, how you would start the logbook onboarding. You would be taken through goal settings. And like Simona already pointed out, um, goals help really to have better conversation. And when I say that, um, it is even the conversation then at the dinner table, similar to the conversation around windows, you know, um, what are the benefits actually to install these high performing windows and making these conversations around um, these benefits really helps um, deciding in the end where would our budget go within the renovation um, project. And um, we had um, many, many cases, for example, um, and interviews with other renovators, and they always said in, in the end, um, if I would have had um, a better way actually to express these goals or objectives straight away, I could have saved a lot of time and um, probably headaches along the journey and in the end money because I might have um, had a clearer position to, to argument actually my needs and aspirations. And that's exactly what we want to enable. So this is a little preview um, of our logbook. And we started adding actually the original um, home data of Simona's unit. Um, and it um, combined then, of course, with the goals she had um, around her um, personal needs, but also aspirational um, goal settings. And that triggered um, certain, like you can see here, um, motivational potential of builds, builds and carbon reductions um, means also energy cost reduction, um, but also um, water bills reduction and the potential also to, to participate, participate in carbon emission reduction, which is a really nice way actually to showcase clearly how it works and what can be achieved with certain steps along the way. Maybe, yeah. I can just jump in one little thing about the water saving for our place um, with that we were actually a bit in a tricky situation so it was four units and all four units only had one water meter so which was really challenging because before you know as sad as it is but if we would have installed rain water saving or something we wouldn't have really benefited from it or everyone else would have and yeah it would have been split by four which was a bit of a shame. So while we had uh, installed, you know, uh, water saving fixtures and fittings everywhere, uh, yet that was one of the reasons why we didn't put in anything with rainwater savings. Just yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and um, when you are going, for example, through goals, um, because this is what you want to do in future, or this is what you want to use as conversation. Um, you will be also um, based on your choices within goals, you will be also getting some recommendations, um, for example, based um, if, if you have a lot of um, decisions around um, comfortable home, energy efficiency, it will trigger, for example, to get in touch with an energy consul consultant in your area. Um, the only um, detailed or um, more detailed information is the postcode at that point, and we will then connect you also with um, some energy consultants within your postcode area. So 
Um, the next step was then adding all the home improvements um, Simona has done. So we went on and added, um, for example, you can see here the windows, um, double glazing. Um, to some degree, we also ask, you know, um, not just to, to which percentage um, it was applied across the home, but we also ask um, specifics, you know, has it actually improved, for example, your feeling of comfort in the home? Has it also contributed to reduce um, your builds on, on the energy side? Um, these are quite important information also to, to understand um, in terms of the entire performance of your home and also gives you um, down the track the potential maybe to improve certain things or at least to investigate um, if certain areas are maybe not as expected to maybe um, dig a little bit deeper and then to, to have someone maybe coming in and um, checking exactly what's going on there yeah. um one thing yeah good thing. that might be one thing you know if people maybe buy or build a, a new home you know you, you build a new home or you buy a fairly new home and you know you know there should be insulation in the walls and in the roof and in the floor but the house is still cold and drafty so therefore we, we figured out you know we have to have the question you know do you have insulation and where do you have insulation and is it actually working because you know people might have insulation everywhere but it might have been installed so badly that it's actually not working so that was exactly. exactly. Yes, absolutely. And um, because we, we have also a marketplace, so anything um, like, for example, if you inquire through the marketplace with one of these um, benchmark companies, they, um, and let's say you have um, done the installation, that will be added automatically to your logbook, but it will also capture information around products, um, life expectancy, warranties, like these typical informations, which um, in at least in our case, um, often enough end up in a folder somewhere, maybe even with a content <laughs> and when I need it. I never have it at hand, um, which is quite annoying. In particular, when we're looking into system solutions, maybe your solar system and, and so on. So um, there will be also reminders, for example, along the way um, for services um, so that we really keep an eye on um, to, to reach the life expectancy of, of system solutions and so on. So there's an entire... Um, thinking around these um, elements and really to contribute also to circular economy. Um, we encourage also, of course, suppliers to uh, to be clear around their pathways um, around circular economy and to commit, for example, also to product stewardship and more. So, yeah, Sonia, just a quick question yeah. from Jordan. Uh, can you remind us how the goal setting one to five are qualified and is there a user guide to help you set your goals? So in terms of the goals, um, we worked um, out six core categories, which are actually um, really easy to understand. And goals in itself are more coming from needs and aspirations. I think it's a good way maybe to just um, jump in. You don't need to to go through all of them at once. Um, you can really be guided what is relevant to you at that time. But you will also understand how powerful they can be in, in these conversations. Um, you have even, for example, let's say you engage a builder um, or you want to discuss an extension with your architect. It really helps prioritizing these things um, in the conversations. And um, we have kept them actually very tangible, accessible. And I would love to invite you also to give feedback to us um, and really be, we are here to uh, constantly enhance and improve these things with you together and really have a proper um, and thorough solution in, in the market for, for these things. But I, we think as in terms of um, the start, they, they should be easy to understand. So um, once we launch this, which will be very soon, early May, jump in, um, sign up, it's free, and, and then start actually using them and give us feedback 
what you think and um, if it's actually easy to, to understand. So um, just to, to also mention, um, goals can be shared, of course. Um, so when you can share them you know, with your partner, you can share them with other family members, or like I said, um, for example, with your architect, um, with your builder and so on. We had a previous session um, last year, for example, with um, a company and a supplier who is um, in, in the sector for healthy natural insulation. And there we were joined in that session um, by a renovator from Perth. And she made these very conscious decisions around health benefits. And it was great actually to understand um, her journey. She made that conscious choice around that insulation um, material. And the builder didn't have any idea how to use the material. And so she connected the builder with the supplier. That supplier is very um, open to uh, um, also share the knowledge around these mat new materials on the market and educate also the, the design and building community. Um, and that actually contributed to a um, little um, course or a little upskill project for the builder. Um, and it's great because she has now added actually a healthy insulation uh, material in her new extension. And the builder itself is, knows now how to use that material also for future projects. So it's a win-win situation at the same time. Yes, yeah, that was just a question what the healthy insulation is. It's a uh, wood fiber insulation. Yes, correct. Wood fiber insulation um, comes as a bulk infill, but also um, as a rigid material, which is a great way actually um, to consider because it's um, it's it might not be completely load bearing, but you can then use it and it goes very quickly up because it fills in already um, a really um, large area. And um, it's easy to use. It can be uh, rendered um, fairly easily as well. So, and it's um, permeable. That means it, it breathes, um, lets moisture also through. So it's not um, somehow um, keeping moisture indoor. And, and that's a great benefit actually to avoid mold built up um, in, inside of the home. So that's exactly how these um, health benefits um, immediately actually become tangible and is a great way actually around decision making. So um, this is an overview after we added actually um, all the home improvements um, Simona has done. Um, this is just a um, part of it. Um, so we haven't, because that was last minute, we would need still to add a couple of things, um, which will then definitely also increase um, the impact tracker. The impact tracker is really there to uh, um, motivate you to uh, to increase um, actually the, the the benefits along the way of your renovation journey, and. Um, it will then convert also in future. So this is a, an area we are still working on the property value. Um, as we know, you know, the future will probably um, con like unfortunately have more of these climate impacts. And we want to make sure that we don't approach it um, through the lens of fear or, you know, or might not be interested in um, yeah, being confronted actually with what might happen with my property or if it gets degraded because it's not um, actually great in energy efficiency and so on. So we want to approach it through the lens of uh, there are solutions and, and you can definitely look into them. You can do something about them. You are in a favorable spot anyway because you own probably a place already and every single renovation uh, is an opportunity actually to to make things better 
and we have eight million homes um and that's a it's a great way actually to uh, to be part of the the broader solution to encourage people really to decarbonize their homes but um, we want to put forward solutions um, which come in a range of options, which includes also material choices. Um, so one quick way is, of course, to look into system solutions like heat pumps, um, solar and so on, and even signing up for renewable energy. The other part is every time you, you need to make a material choice to look also into what is actually better for yourself and also for the planet. So, yeah, so just yeah. one quick question, Sonia, how does it calculate the energy bill reductions? Yeah, the energy bill reductions are based at the moment on, on the goals. Um, so there's a potential. We do um, currently work out um, a calculator which draws in, for example, when you know your um, average energy consumption, you can add that. Otherwise, you can draw by average within your postcode. And then based on, on your goals um, and decisions you make, we can basically um, calculate a potential in reduction of bills um, based on, on these choices. And, and then you can work towards it. Um, but that said, we want to incorporate um, down the track even um, true energy consumption and um, map that also with your choices um, of home improvements and then really say, yes, you have achieved this much yeah, in, in bill reduction. That depends um, on the integration of some real-time data which is currently discussed also on national state level to be um, accessible to everyone and public data. Yeah, I think um, that's at the moment. Um, I'm, I want to thank in particular um, Simona for, for this evening with a lot of insights um, in her renovation journey. I think it's um, quite incredible what was achieved in, in terms of these approximate 10 years. And um, I want also to say a special thank you to Sustainable House Days and Renew. They are all doing an amazing job um, and really educating and um, distributing knowledge and um, all these stories around how can we um, make our homes better and how can we make better decisions along the way. And I would also like to invite you, everyone who wants to experience Evitat, um, we have already launched our community application. It's free. You can sign up on the website. We are also doing a free renovator expo in KC, which is in co collaboration with the city of KC. This is early May. And you can find um, the event information on our website as well, or you can go to the community. Um, you can scan here the QR code as well. And um, yeah, just RSVP and we hope to see you there. Simona, do you yep. want to say anything? No, that, that's quite, but yeah, like I said, as, as a general thing, you know, don't be too discouraged that it's all too hard or, or too much or you don't know where to start um, because I think every little bit counts, you know, even if you can't uh, afford everything or, you know, do everything at once, you, you need to start somewhere. And if, if you have the logbook and you make your goals, it's, you know, it, it's, I think it's the perfect way just to get into it. And it might just be that you with a strip and seal your windows and doors. You know, that's a thing you can do yourself. You don't need anyone for it, but as a starting point to get you through the first winter and it will already have a big impact. And yeah, I think just, you know, don't put it in a too hard basket. Uh, just get started and see where it can take you. Absolutely. And we'll make sure you are supported along the way um, with, with anything you need. Um, and like Simona said, even little steps are absolutely important and um, everyone starts somewhere. Um, we have been on that journey also for quite a while. Um, we have a house in Queensland and 
um, we have also made these uh, first steps and even what, what Simona even said, you know, in the beginning, they, you know, you also creating knowledge and um, you, you need to inform yourself actually to make better choices. Um, and that's a journey, really, truly a journey. It's not a one-off kind of flipping renovation often enough. Um, it adds to it, it one after the other. And, um, but it's also a journey of feeling proud that you are actively um, doing something good you know, to, to yourself, to your family, and also um, a really important um, step actually to decarbonize and um, providing a solution for the planet. Yep, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you so much for Thanks attending so much. tonight. And um, yeah, wish everyone a great evening and hope to see you and soon. Great Easter. Um, yes, and Easter, Easter break. Yeah. And yeah, hope to see you in the community as well. Exactly. Yeah.